What is the difference between a homemade slime and a store-bought slime? This is the most commonly asked question across all of my videos, and so in today's video, I picked up some of the most popular store-bought slimes out there and recreated them into normal slimes so we can compare the textures and see how they differ. First up to the test, we have the Elmer's Goo Bucket, and this comes with a ton of add-ins, but I was really interested in what the texture would be like, because this looks very slime-like, and although it looks slime-like, it does have the typical kind of thick putty feel, so it's kind of hard to stretch and a bit rubbery, but overall, it is a really fun slime. Store-bought slimes are never usually this clear. The only downside to this is this has a bit of a yellow tint. I also tried the smaller one and this has no yellow tint whatsoever so it may just be that batch was a bad one or it could be that the bigger ones just tend to have that. But I did enjoy this. The only add-in I didn't enjoy was the clay because this made it rubbery and rip. All the other ones added a lot of benefit to it. And when I mixed in these add-ins into the normal slime, the equivalent of it, it just mixed in a bit easier and stretched a bit more and that was pretty much the whole difference. I also thought it would be interesting to show a comparison of yellow tinted with completely clear. It's very hard to get it completely clear just because oils and dust from the surrounding area can get in there. And I'm not saying this happened with the putty, it could that be down to just the ingredients being used. But this one is completely clear, I used lots of gloves, I didn't touch it on any surfaces and I didn't touch it before it was done, which is very similar to what this one looks like. Next slime caught my eye purely because of how cool the packaging is and this comes in a lava lamp. When I ordered this I was worried it would open from the top and it would be hard to poke but it actually opens from the base. So this is really really fun to play with. At first it feels like a slime and then when you take it out it feels a lot more like a putty and it also removes from the container really easily. There was no faffing about with this which is another thing I really liked and the glitters in this were really pretty. For the recreation I did add a drop of green dye and then also a ton of glitter. If I wanted it to be more realistic I would have added less. It was really fun and like you can see here it is a bit more stretchy but overall I did prefer the store-bought one just because it's so unique. The next slime did leave me a bit conflicted because this felt the most like slime out of all of these, but it was also incredibly sticky to the point where I literally hated playing with this because it wouldn't stop sticking to me. And weirdly enough, I found that the second time I played with this, it was less so, so maybe it had like an activating agent that when you played with it, it helped. But it was still very sticky and it wasn't nice to play with and a normal slime wouldn't be like this. However, this did feel a lot like a normal slime that wasn't activated and I did add a bit of borax to a bit of it and it didn't stick as much so maybe this genuinely has very realistic slime ingredients in it. For the remake I just added a bit of clear glue and white glue together and then some neon pigment so it created this muted colour like theirs and theirs was scented like a clean cotton scent. I didn't scent mine but mine didn't stick which was the main thing that I liked more. Next up we have my favourite store-bought slime in this video. 
video and I didn't have high hopes when I opened it. The top was kind of open, but it hadn't dried out. It looked very dull in the pigment at first. And then when I pulled it out, I saw that it wasn't dull at all. And also this would have definitely had the clear base because the pigment would have had to show through. And this was so much more stretchy than the clear one. And this was just really nice. It was like a thick slime. I would compare this to a slime and the pigment was stunning. It had like an artificial apple scent, but I kind of like that. So I really enjoyed this overall. And this is my favorite one. And to recreate this, I added some duochrome pigment. It was a purple to blue color shift. And I added some glitters, which wasn't quite right. I also, this is a nail pigment. And I think the one they would have used would have just been a chrome one, which is slightly more dull because the nail pigment is really expensive. So it wouldn't make sense to kind of sell a product with this. But like you can see, the difference is then that this is a lot more shiny and it shows the color a lot more. This is it with the color comparison because I do put a filter on my pigment videos. So I wanted to compare it, but you can kind of see that it has a duller tone. Next up we have the Mermaid's Paradise Trio and this had some of the most amazing slimes actually. I would really recommend picking this bundle up. And the first one was a pigment one which I wasn't wild about so I'll start off with this. This one was a lot duller in tone and like you can see it's a lot more like thick and clunky. In slime textures I find that scented oil really helps to soften up things so it could just be that the previous pigment slime had a bit more scented oil but this one was not good especially considering that we needed to mix in the sequins and I just found this was way 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 too thick to do this easily. Like, like you can see here, I could barely stretch it, which means that it was just hard and it was barely sticking in and I needed to just try and again and again and again. And this should have been a fun process, but it actually ended up being really stressful and I would have probably not added the glitters in if I were to do this again. To recreate this, I decided to use flakies this time. And this is kind of like a less finely milled um, pigment. And this gives off a cool like kind of sequin effect. And this was so much fun to mix in. Like you can see, this has like a blue purple, or well, a blue purple green, I would say, but I think this was the tone that they were trying to go for. Like you can see when I've upped the saturation to the same amount, it does have way more purple in it, but this one's just a that bit better. But like I mentioned, this is nail pigment and the one they're using probably isn't nail pigment. Mermaid's Cove was so nice. The blue was so, so clear and the add-ins just look so beautiful with it and I really enjoyed mixing this in. Again, I do want to say that this looks a lot softer than it did feel in real life. Pineapple scent, which I was really surprised by just because it was so clear. I don't know how they did this. Really, really good. It was really nice to hold. And ultimately, if you don't have these types of ingredients at home and you don't make slime, this would be an amazing thing to buy. I think this is a really, really nice one, but it is on the thicker side and it does have a putty feel, but you can stretch it a lot, which I was impressed by. I started off with the semi-sticky slime so all the fishbowl bees would get held in. And I also added a drop of food dye.
Next up, we have a texture that's commonly referred to in slime as Bingzu beads. And this comes with a clear base as well. I did find that this was very hard to mix in at first, but then after a day, I found this was way more stretchy for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. This also had a grape scent. It was clear. I wouldn't say quite as clear as the blue one, weirdly enough, but overall it was a good slime and I really enjoyed going back to play with this. To recreate this, I only added one drop of purple, but this ended up being a blue purple, so it didn't end up looking anything like it, but it did work well. And the main difference for the slime versus the other one was that the Bingzu beads mixed in really easily, whereas the other one took a bit of work. Next up we have the glow in the dark edition and this is really fun, it comes as a single slime and it comes in a really nice colour as well and it's scented like fresh laundry which matches the colour a lot in my opinion and this looked like a white slime to me but I don't know what they've added in, this is very silky and I did find that this is really nice to just hold in your hand and squish, like it isn't something you can stretch or particularly play with like a slime but it's really nice stress ball and this glowed blue, I don't know how common this is, I found it really hard to kind of glow in the container and because I was filming I couldn't use both hands but I just put the surface area at the bottom up which is why that's the only bit glowing but it was really good and I did enjoy it. The only difference between the slime is mainly how it moves pretty much and also that mine ended up being a bit clumpy because I didn't sieve the like powder through whereas I guess they do and theirs was a very silky formula so I have to give it to them. Next up we have a pre-mixed geo set and this was a really interesting contrast because the one before did come with separate parts and I was expecting a very thick texture again but this was amazing. This is my second favourite slime in this video. It was super stretchy, very slime like, it smelled like strawberry laces and it was absolutely stunning. Like you can see here it mixed in really well, it kept in the beads well as well and yeah it stretched amazingly. I was just in awe of this. However, I did find this really hard to recreate because this is a very lightly pigmented slime so even though I only added a drop and a bit of some pink dye this ended up being very purple so I had to add some clear dye to just balance it out and this is what I ended up with it was honestly a very similar texture theirs was slightly thicker and theirs was scented as well which is why theirs is a bit more cloudy than this On the flip side, I did not enjoy the foam that came mixed in. I'm, I'm so sad because I tried the second. I was expecting something amazing and I was severely disappointed. This was definitely like what would be a mix of clear and a white slime. Like you can see it has this kind of milky base. This scent is like coconut and the beads fell out all the time and it didn't really stretch too well. So there wasn't really a point of this. I wish they put a better slime or just like softened this up. Could have been a bad batch, but yeah, in comparison to the previous one, it just made it look even worse. Next up we have an icy slime comparison and this had a very promising start. I did enjoy the colour of this, it looked really nice and vibrant and when I was playing with this it had a bit of fallout which is very typical of icy and it also smelt really good. This smells like a strawberry fizzy lace this time and it inflated a lot, I really enjoyed it. And it also felt like a cloud slime, it was a really fun texture to play with. However, when I finished with it, it stuck to the table and it ruined the table and I had to buy another one so I don't recommend this. In a normal slime texture you can just add in some red food dye into an icy 
icy slime, which is just made with fake snow and some clear slime. And like you can see, it ends up not sticking to the table. This next slime is actually really hard to get wrong as a basic slime. So I was surprised when this one ended up being bad as a store-bought because this had a really wet residue on top. And typically in normal slimes, they don't add in any water-based stuff. So like you can see, my fingers were like slipping off every time I was trying to stretch it. Had an okay stretch. Um, the scent was like a light cotton candy scent with a bit of berry in my opinion. And it smushed down on the table, but it didn't really create any sounds. And I wasn't impressed with this really at all. Um, it was just kind of average in comparison to some of their really good slimes. It did inflate a bit though. And then to recreate this, I had a clear base and I added in some um, like shredded fake snow. And then I added in some food dye as well. And again, I went overboard on the food dye, but this ended up not being too bad at all. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe and I will see you very soon. Bye.